Oh, looks like the post lady left me a package. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream. And it's a really nice day out, but it's awful cold. You can see, I got a jacket on. When I say awful cold, it's in the 60s. I just am a hot person. <laughs> so long pants and a jacket. Uh, we've been dipping down into the 40s every night and uh, it got me thinking that I might be able to do some work inside the camper and stay relatively cool uh, although I like it warm sometimes inside that camper whenever we're in the high 80s it gets a little bit warm uh, without the air running so I'm going to do a fan installation so let's go out to the camper unbox this thing and see what it's going to take to put it in. Well, like most of us that have older campers and even in the newer campers this has kind of been the standby this little tiny fan that they install from the factory and it does a good job I haven't had any problems with this one it does provide circulation especially to dry out this bathroom and it will pull air to some extent from windows if you leave windows open in the camper and run this fan unfortunately it's just not enough air whenever things get really hot like we see on so many other channels a lot of people install the fantastic fan now I really think that that is definitely the best fan for your RV but if you're in a situation like I am where you may not keep your RV but you do want to add something a little bit better than what was factory uh, I got another alternative for that. Now, those fantastic fans are roughly $140 to $300 depending on the options. You can get options like remote controls and closing automatically when it rains. All those things I think are a little bit overkill, but it would be nice to have features like reversible to maybe ventilate something that's close to a window that you want to get out right away or having separate speeds other than just one speed so why would you want to change from that small fan well if you think that you might run into a situation like Heidi and I did and we were down south and it was in the 90s and we were stopping at a Walmart we really didn't have enough power to run fans inside the camper and although the air outside was starting to cool off we didn't have any way to really draw it into the camper and if we had a fan that circulated a little bit better a 12 volt fan we could have run off of our battery power uh, we just have a single battery that would have allowed air to come in the windows and, and cool us off a little bit more. What I found was an alternative. I really didn't want to spend $150 on a fan that's going to be going into a camper that we're potentially going to get rid of down the road. So I picked myself up one of these Hengs, H-E-N-G-S fans, and it's called a Vortex 2. So let's go ahead and unbox it, take a look at it, and uh, see what it's going to take to get it installed. Now I apologize because since I've sold my lift table in the garage, I really don't have a place to unbox and show you things like I normally do. Um, I'll change that in the future, but here's basically the way it comes. I ordered this from Amazon. Of course, the link is going to be down below. Click the link. It'll take you right to this product. So not only will you get this exact same product, you'll get it at a pretty decent price it'll be shipped right away and on top of that you'll get to see how it gets installed firsthand all right there you go and you can see from the photo it pretty much explains it all you go from this to this now on the back it basically has the instructions and it could be this is all the instructions that you get we'll have to see once we get it opened up yeah, the instructions aren't the best. You can tell it's just uh, some sort of a photocopy, but it looks pretty explicit, and uh, you can read everything. The diagrams, the pictures aren't the greatest. So let's see what we get here. Well, there's some bubble wrap, um, some sort of a circuit board that's attached, and of course I can see that there's a, a dial indication here, so that's for the knob on the other side. And uh, here's the crank knob to uh, elevate your vent and open it up. And of course uh, there's some screws in here looks like there's a little allen wrench and some sort of a spacer deal here let's look at this part here yeah it's 
pretty cool. It looks like that the fan itself and the screen, um, I kind of like that. I do know that whenever you put a screen this close to moving blades, you might get noise. You might get more noise than normal. So that's something to look forward to, to hear how much noise it might make. And then on the business end, really simple. You have two wires. You're going to have a, a positive and a negative. And you're going to connect it to what you already have in there. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and dive into this a little bit deeper. And the first way we're going to do that is get a baseline reading on the sound of the old one that's in there right now. Okay, so you see I have my phone here on our blue tank, our little blue tank. And uh, you can see the distance it is from the fan. So there's going to be some sound resonation uh, coming from traffic outside through the vent that is open up above and of course a door that's open and some windows and of course bouncing off the walls of the shower here. So let's get an idea of just conversation first and me talking. Again, because I'm in this area and it's enclosed, you can see that it's falling under normal conversation. But it wouldn't be too hard for me at all to jump that up just by talking a little bit louder. Uh, now let's go ahead and, and try to see what it sounds like. Just ambient noise, maybe some traffic passing by. Okay, so now that we have that baseline, let's look what's going to happen now whenever we turn on the fan. Now again, this fan is just one speed, so this is what you get. So this is not terribly loud. I mean, I have a fully charged 12 volt battery and I'm actually plugged into shore power. So I'm getting a full 12 volts at those wires. That's basically what it sounds like whenever you run the fan. It's never been obnoxious. That's not the issue. The fan noise isn't crazy, and I don't mind it, especially when you're running the shower. Quite honestly, the water falling off of uh, your body, <laughs> hitting the shower floor, makes pretty much the same amount of noise as that fan does whenever it's running. So let's go ahead and see what it's going to take to get this new fan installed. All right, so this is some poor working conditions, but I'm going to try to get you the best lighting that I can. Uh, it's kind of hard whenever the main light is right here, so hopefully this camera will keep up. Uh, the first thing you need to do, just get a Phillips screwdriver and remove these four screws that hold this surround or this trim that's basically just for looks more than anything else, but it does also offer some protection. Now I've closed the vent up top uh, to make it to where there's not quite as much light coming through and you, you can get a good idea uh, the baseline of what it looks like but I think I might have to go back up with it here in a second so the first thing again these screws okay so once the last screws out you can see this ring just kind of drops there you go and now this kind of exposes the part that you're going to be working with the most we go ahead and set this down keep the screws out of the way make sure that you have screens in your drains just in case you drop a screw you don't want to drop a screw that goes down into your drain so now what we're gonna to have to work with is getting this piece off here which is nothing more than the screen itself of course this has to come out of the way also there's a couple of screws that hold this to the metal frame ones right here and then ones over here so let's go ahead and do that okay so now those screws are removed now we're gonna remove this handle screw Again, a Phillips screwdriver takes care of all this. Then this handle will have to come down. Uh, hang on to the knob. You might have to put it back up again for the fan to come out, possibly. Now that the screws are removed from the fan and these two screen holders, <laughs> basically it holds the screen up against the metal, this will just drop down. Then, of course, you can see here's the switch for the fan. Uh, and I got it all tucked up inside here. Remember, I redid the roof of this camper, which if you haven't seen that video, uh, I'll put a link in the description here or a card up above. Just click it and it'll take you to it. And now uh, we don't have to be concerned about any of this. The butyl seal, uh, the trim here, you know, none of this, because all we're going to do is be removing this fan. And of course, this is part of the lifting mechanism. You can see here, if I twist it, it opens up that vent. What we need to do is uh, disconnect the fan and the switch 
from the wiring coming from the camper. Now, it might be a little tricky, like in my case, I have a big wire nut like this that's holding this white wire, and I need to get to that. So you just have to be patient and kind of fish it out. At this point, you might be asking yourself, why is there so many wires? Why is there two wires going to these connections? Well, what they do whenever they build these RVs is they just run the wire through the area in which it needs to be connected to whatever accessory might be added. Then if that accessory is actually optioned in and added, they take that single wire and they cut it. And what they do then is where they cut it, they put it back together and they wire in the accessory. That's what this is. This is the same wire, it's just been cut and then reinstalled and that way this 12 volts can continue on and go to the other accessories like the lights and stuff like that that power the rest of the camper in the back so don't be alarmed it's not like there's more circuits here or anything like that now that these two wires are loose be careful because um, if this was stripped back I mean you don't want these touching that's definitely not a good thing now we just have to remove this fan now there's a couple of different ways you can remove the fan one of them is to to pull the motor off of this bracket the other is to actually remove the bracket itself and I kinda wanna do that so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go outside of what the instructions say and I'm going to trim this off with a hacksaw that's all you need to do is use a hacksaw now I'll probably use some sort of a cutoff tool or something like that but a hacksaw will take care of it and it'll remove this no problem I mean basically what you're supposed to do is is pull the fan blade off which this thing's getting awful brittle because of it being so old um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't break instead of come off but you're supposed to pull this fan blade off and I'll show you what it's supposed to do then at that point yeah you can see this fan look at that that's pretty bad right there and then once this blade is off um, just a couple of screws to remove that the thing is is although this bracket is supportive for the uh, crank mechanism to some extent um, it's not as strong as what this brace is here. It's really not adding that much rigidity. So I would rather have the extra ventilation that's provided by not having something blocking it. Because potentially this could cause noise too because a fan, again, that's got blades spinning whenever you put something up close to it is going to cause more noise. So again, I'm going to trim this out, but if you don't want to go to that problem or that trouble, uh, just go ahead and remove these two little Phillips screws and this motor will come right out. Okay, so this is what it looked like here. I used my cutoff tool, I cut it off, and I'm not too concerned about these little pieces that are sticking out here. Other than they're sharp, you gotta be careful about that. But now I don't have something blocking whatever air I might be trying to circulate out. So just holding this up here, I'm trying to see how far I need to go uh, with the gear. What I'm trying to do is line up uh, this little gear section here with this gear here. And uh, don't pay attention to the wires or anything, just kind of uh, do what you need to do to see if it's going to line up with the current spacing. You can see the, the lighting's gotten much darker now as this fan is getting close to being in place. And I can see that we might be pretty close to the correct area. Let me look again. Um, actually, it looks like that I'm going to have to move it back. It just doesn't look like it's going to uh, reach it. It looks like that it's too far in. Now, all this that I'm doing, lifting this up and trying to get it to line up and stuff, you can avoid all that just by measuring from here to here and get a rough idea um, and then comparing that uh, with the measurement that goes from here to here. But I can tell that I need to move it, so I'm going to do that. So I wanted to show you how easy it is these two screws that are here have to be removed once they're removed let's go ahead and flip it over this gear section here this gear box can be moved to this location here when you move this gear box back to its new location you have to then check to make sure that the stud or the crank that's coming out of the vent currently seats in this area really well if not if there's some distance that needs to be gapped you need to use this spacer and basically this spacer then 
would go on the mounting point like this to raise the gearbox up a little bit just a fraction to help seat this a little bit further so be aware that whenever your vent gets secured you need to make sure that it really gets secured to the point where it's actually seated deeply inside here so you don't strip these gears out okay so before I go any further on this I want to check to make sure the fan works so what I did is I took the leads that I have coming off of the fan and I hooked it up to a 12 volt battery that I have in the garage just to make sure it works because last thing I want to do is take this fan and do all this wiring to find out I need to bring it back out again so this part I actually consider to be one of the more difficult things to do and that's supporting the fan while you do the wiring you don't want to be hanging on to the wiring and trying to connect the wiring at the same time so what I'm going to do in this case is use a milk crate and a cardboard box <laughs> uh, just to get me up to level of course I have that blue tank in here that they're both sitting on um, even then you can see it's still a little bit of a handful so now that this is supported up you can kind of see it in the picture frame here um, I'm going to connect that wiring and I've got to use wire nuts that are bigger than the ones that they gave me uh, because of the way my camper's wired and yours might be the same way too so go ahead and uh, do whatever you need to do to get your connections made and now that I've got those secured partially I'm going to take tape and I'm going to wrap that around there to make sure that it stays secured for a decent amount of time again there's other ways of doing this uh, you could solder you could uh, then heat shrink um, you can get different types of connectors but basically this is going to work for me now that I've got that connected I'm going to lift this up in place line up the hole for the crank with the crank itself then take a uh, Phillips screwdriver and uh, secure a bolt that was in there originally which that's this bolt right here um, secure that in there to hold this all together one of the nice things that you can do here and that's actually what I'm going to do to make it to where you can access this wiring and, and hopefully um, secure it to uh, this crossbar in a place that doesn't interfere with the opening or closing mechanism is you can remove this fan and they actually give you the wrench that's needed you can remove the fan blade so you can reach through these openings to get to whatever you need to um, once I remove this cap which I just took a flat tip screwdriver and it just pries off um, just be gentle with it go around in a circle uh, once you have this cap off you then take the Allen wrench that they provide and you just loosen this set screw that's on the shaft so go ahead and put this in here and needless to say it shouldn't take very much effort at all to get this to loosen up maybe just a couple little turns and then at that point this should start sliding off which looks like it wants to go a little bit further it's nice that they provided this wrench I have wrenches that would do the same thing obviously being a mechanic but there's a lot of you out there that might not have those or it could be that you're out on the road and you don't have your tools with you so now that the fans off um, just remember which way it came off it can only really go on one way that you can get to that set screw but you never know so people can do some crazy things so let's go ahead and get this up get the wires kind of off to the side here and more than obvious that the crank is definitely getting lined up perfect there and the holes of course that hold the uh, fan up into the vent uh, those are getting lined up also whenever you're tightening the screws that hold it to the bracket make sure that you don't over tighten the screws number one uh, number two you may not be able to bottom the screws all the way out onto the frame like the old fan shroud was secured and the reason being is this gearbox has to stay lined up to the gear and there's a chance that if you try to tighten this up all the way it'll put the gearbox on a bind and make it to where the gearbox won't actuate the way it should be 
So what I've done here is I've left this screw uh, slightly loose in my case, and then this one is tightened. It's snugged all the way down. I'm going to reinstall the fan blade. I'll test it out at that point to hear how noisy it is without the screen. Then I'm going to put the screen in. We'll see if that changes the sound at all. And of course the surround will do most of the securing of this anyways. Because the surround or the finish, the part that makes it look nice to cover up all this wood, it actually goes up in here and holds the fan in place also. Although it's not supposed to be used purely for that reason, you have four screws that are doing a good job holding it in place. So with this screw just slightly loose, I'm not too concerned. Uh, this one's very tight and of course the gearbox is really tight too. So all those things are going to hold the fan. It's not going to come falling out of your ceiling. This is what it looks like without the screen and it all assembled. And you can kind of tell that the surround, the way it's made is because whenever the vent's mounted, it's crooked. It's crooked because your roof is sloped. So this surround just kind of takes up that gap and makes it look better overall. But like I said, in turn also, it keeps this fan from actually falling out, even if we did lose all the screws that are in there. So I checked the knob, uh, the movement is good. Um, it holds position, it's not bad, I, I like that. Um, I really miss the little crank because the little crank is a little bit faster. And I'm sure with the screen on, my fingers are gonna kinda get in the way. That's why they have these notches here for your fingers to go into. Uh, but I wanted to test this thing uh, without. Now, we'll, we'll do the, the volume test here in a second, uh, but let's just listen how this thing runs in the first place. Let's go ahead and go right to low. And this is in a forward position, and what they mean is it's pushing the air out the way it normally would. Uh, there's a bit of a whine. It, not terrible. And really that whine is the motor noise um, more than the fan itself. So I would think that that whine may in the future, possibly, uh, as the, the brushes start to wear, as the motor starts to wear, uh, that whine might go away a little bit. Um, I might be wrong. Uh, there, there's times that I've had stuff like this, little electric motors that have gotten quieter, and I've had other times that they've gotten louder. Uh, so we'll have to see how that works you know, going forward. So that's low. Let's go ahead and go to medium. Not bad. Let's go ahead and go to high. Wow. That's not bad at all. Uh, no vibration to speak of at all into the camper. Very good. Now this is the one thing that I noticed that I really like is once the motor's at full speed here, it really maintains its speed with not only, of course, supplying the electricity needed to uh, turn the motor, but also with the weight of this fan. This fan has some weight to it. It is not lightweight. The blade itself is what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean when we turn it off. Watch how long it takes for it to shut down. You can see it's still going. The centrifics, because of the weight of the, the fan blade, helps this, helps it maintain its speed. Uh, that's why you have flywheels on small engines. And that's why you have flywheels on stick shift cars. Uh, it's for the weight to keep the motor uh, freed up, uh, if possible. So let's go ahead and do the reverse. We'll go to medium. There's only a high and a, re a medium on the reverse. I'll go right to medium. And of course, the reverse means I'm pulling air from outside into the camper. And then of course, high. Again, not bad. I, I'm, I'm happy with this. Let's go ahead and slow this down by hand. What is it? Burned a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, same deal again. Um, traffic's just as much as before. And, of course, me talking. Same type of volume going on there. 
So let's see what happens whenever we uh, fire that fan up and we put it to, let's say, high. Let's just go right to high. Okay, so now that you see that, let's go ahead and go to low. And if you remember, we didn't have a choice with that other fan. It was just on. Now let's go ahead and try this with the screen on because you can see the screen is off. Now the way the screen gets put in place is it has four tabs and there's provisions for those tabs on the shroud part of the fan assembly. And they just go in and twist, uh, which would be clockwise. So up and then just clockwise. It's just a one little twist thing and it's secure. So let's get back to the test. And I'm gonna go right to the high sound so we can see if there's any more noise going on. Well, I can say no. Uh, I can tell that it's not moving at the speed that it was before. Uh, that's kind of expected. But the answer to that question or problem is no additional sound. Um, that's good. That's not bad at all. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's actually uh, pulling some air. Even though all the windows are open on the camper, um, it's pulling some air. So let's go back to this. So I guess I can say that there is a slight difference in sound, just a little bit. All right, so some of the questions. Is it going to move as much air as a Fantastic Fan? No. I've, I've seen Fantastic Fans and they move a lot of air. They're very nice. They're nicely built. But there's two things that you got to consider. One of them is price. The second thing is you can't do the installation like I just did there. You have to go on the roof. You have to remove your lap sealant. You then have to remove the butyl that's underneath of the vent and you have to clean all that up and then install the fantastic fan as a unit and of course you're going to need more butyl tape more lap sealant and you have to be on the roof to do it this i did inside and again i didn't know necessarily if i wanted a fantastic fan going into a camper that most likely i'm going to be selling in a few years I just need something that's better than what was already in there. And I'm glad that I got up in there because I was thinking that this fan that I had in the camper already, which seemed to do a pretty good job, was going to last a long time. But you could tell as soon as I touched that fan blade, that thing wanted to break off and it did just with a little bit of movement. So the installation went relatively easy. There's a few things you have to watch whenever you're doing it. I don't know what kind of difficulty level I would say on this. Uh, it would be as difficult as installing a faucet in your sink uh, about the same except it's overhead so that might make it a little bit more difficult but then again some of these faucets to get underneath the sink is kind of difficult too so um, I would probably put it in that category there other than that uh, everything went pretty smooth I like the way that it sounds it's not extremely noisy I actually sitting here on the bed think it might be a little bit quieter although my phone showed that they were the same it's a different tone, so it does seem a little bit quieter. But then again, I'm sitting by the door now and there's traffic going by, so that could be what I'm hearing. If you wanna purchase this, click the link down below. It'll take you right to this one, and you can follow this exact same steps. Now, if you have a different type of vent, you may not have to move that gearbox like I did, but that was just two screws to move it over really easy and then of course you had to worry about that spacer which I didn't have to run that on mine I was in good shape there and of course the wiring you got to make sure that it's up and out of the way and I could have made it easier on myself by lengthening the wires but as you guys know they do a lot of work um, especially on electrical 
uh, the more connections the more problems that there could be so uh, I would rather just have a couple connections there and not be so concerned about way the wires are routed because they're not going to chafe they're not moving they're secure they're going to stay secure right where they're at well I hope this video helped you out if you like this video click like or subscribe to my channel here and you'll find us Heidi and I going about getting to the point where we're going to be full-time RVing but these are the kind of things you can expect whenever you're an RV owner and how to maintain and change things and upgrade things so again link down below click the link it'll take you right to it and as always guys I hope to see you out there bye